double back. So you said, we knew this, uh, the original people of the planet, and then somewhere along the lines, uh, this understanding has been forgotten or lost. Or purposely removed by Antoine. Yeah, that? That, that's another oh, plot twist. <laughs> plot twist. So let's let's go with that. Purposely removed by anti life, because I, I think that's what happened. <laughs> and like Cash and Veritas, with honor, respect, and gratitude, welcome to the Suncast Podcast with Lalita of the Sun and Tavares of the Sun. And uh, so, in Lakesh, Veritas, it's in been a Lakesh while. In Veritas, it has been a while. We're happy to close out the year with this discussion on uh, life and look forward to our next uh, podcast in 2022. Cool, yeah, same here. You know, the year has flown by very quickly. Uh, but for those who have been following, you know, we've been speaking about this concept of life and anti-life, right? So. Uh, today, the topic is all life is life. I'm going to ask if we may start with calling for the truth so that we set the stage for all of you to experience the truth of what's being said and for us to walk upon the truth as we talk about this. So yeah. if you, you may repeat after me if you would like. We call for the truth. We call to see the truth. In this time of blindness, we call to be free to see. We Shall we call to hear the truth in this time where the sound of lies rules over logic and reasons? Shall we call to speak the truth in this time where there is mute compliance? We are free to speak out. Shall we call for the truth to come into our experience and change what is out of order into what is divine order? Shall we ask that each living moment offer us opportunities that we step into before they expire into the next moment and that each moment that's born of space and time give us the call for courage that is needed to release the delusion that being deaf, dumb, and blind will produce peace. The facts will show that what it produces is global death and suffering. Shall we have nothing less than the truth? We are all established in truth. Lies and uh, obfuscation cannot sustain us, nor is it a solution for us. We encourage you to continue and repeat after me the call for the power of the divine feminine to come back into our world, which is a call for life itself. Shall we call for the power of the Divine Feminine to return into our world with the way, the way which is honor, respect, and gratitude. This is honor, respect, and gratitude to the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. We call for the power of the Divine Feminine to come back into our world with the way which is honor, respect, and gratitude. Again, join me in this call for the power of the Divine Feminine that has been absent from our world to come back into this world with the way, which has also been absent, honor, respect, and gratitude. Honor, Thank respect, you. and gratitude. So everything about the divine feminine and the idea of life is touching on this idea of the topic at hand. So all life is life. You know, everything is consciousness, right? We know that, but uh, what I'd like for us to do is explore that in a, in a deeper way beyond just tree hugging. Yeah, yeah, kumbaya, <laughs> right? All life is life. But like, what does this really mean? And uh, so looking into this matter on my own, I see that metaphorically, reli uh, the religion of science has uh, deemed life as mechanistic, where it views organisms such as insects, even human beings from a Darwinistic perspective, as mechanical. You know, it does not acknowledge the, the aspect of consciousness, you know, which is in every single thing, even um, under this umbrella of understanding. It's not just the insects, the animals, and the humans, but it's even inanimate objects, you know, which your layman typically looks at as well. But this idea of moving into the space of all life is life, I, I'm seeing on the planet where it looks like we're in this fork in the road, where we're being presented with these opportunities to choose life or to choose anti-life, which 
again, in a, the previous podcast, we were talking about life versus anti-life and our choices and within the structure of our society. So we are growing and evolving, but again, there's this fork in the road. So what are some of the, the understandings that you feel that people should have regarding this idea of uh, moving into the truth of all life is life and giving reverence and respect to all? We, th there's so much that can be said. This may end up being a series of talks. There's so much that can be said about this. The all must be considered from the position of, of the truth, from the position of uh, the reality. All things are connected. Existence itself is conscious. So the fact that something exists in its um, environment on the planet, which is alive in an atmosphere of air that is conscious and alive, uh, in a solar system that is alive, in a galaxy that is alive, in a universe that is alive, it is um, anti-life to make us think that uh, we are less than what should be revered, that um, that the seeds that produce the plants that we eat should not be revered, that the birds that sing the song that birth the leaves from the tree should not be revered, that the man who's the indigenous man in Australia or Africa or in the Americas should not be revered because they are in communion with nature. It is nature that is our teacher. It is the, the way that has been sustainable the direction that we're living, living in has made our planet unsustainable. Our desires are unsustainable. There's only so many, um, so many moments that you can get high. There's only so much food, chicken you can eat. There's only so many women you can sleep with and only so many men that you can make, you know, pay for your champagne out of your shoe or whatever it is people <laughs> want to do. None of this is, uh, sustainable none of this is truly life and so we are blind to so much that is important and significant we are taught through our religions that we come here as less than the lint in the worm's navel we are sinners mm -hmm. we are terrible depending on you know what geographical location you come from you know you're living you know the president even speaks about some countries are countries that are equal to a toilet and some countries are not. All of this kind of condemnation, all of this is anti-life. All of this is being burdened upon us. Our children are being burdened with these understandings in the lexicon of living in our time. So all of that is anti-life. And it's, of course, there's much more that can be said and all of you who are listening, I'm sure can think of the things that happen to you at work. Think of the way that men treat women, the way women treat men, the way your religion treats you, the way your job treats you, the way the government treats you, the way our world has suffered in this recent time, and now you're being pushed around and made to do things. Maybe you're in agreement with them, maybe you're not, but all of this is anti-life. None of this is about life. This doesn't happen in nature. <laughs> I don't think there's any record of that. <laughs> no, record. Record. no, no record of this happening. No, it is not. This is not how the trees deal with each other. This is not how animals deal with each other. This self-hatred, this um, everyone running to the edge of the cliff and self-sabotage, you know, doing everything they can to destroy themselves because everything around them is trying to destroy them and they emulate the aggressor. So can we talk about that a bit? Yes. Uh, so this idea of all life is life, uh, emulating the aggressor, so uh, we understand that there are people on the planet who are marginalized. We have what are referred to as elites. Uh, we have groups and organizations on our planet that are coercing and manipulating people to do what they want them to do. And oftentimes when they don't do it, they're trying to kill them or extinguish them or just the fact that they exist, they're looking to remove them. And uh, this has been going on for millennia on our planet. But one of the things that was that came to me was how we perpetuate that behavior with other 
um, and I, I say this respectfully, lesser life forms within the way in which how we perceive things, or you know, yeah, the third dimensional. Yeah, that's an untrue statement. Of course, it's, it's, not, it's not the reality. It's not that anything is less or greater, but it's just we perceive an ant or a roach or a spider as less than us because they're smaller and we're probably like a thousand times larger and you know, we can end their lives like that. And that is not all. That has not always been the way it is. And there are cultures and those who are more highly evolved and people of greater consciousness who do still live with the understanding that all life is to be revered. This has come through the world religions that if you revere or are thankful or grateful to anything other than whatever the religion is that is speaking from the position of power, you have sinned and now you know uh, you are in blasphemy. So now this has been for um, thousands and thousands of years with the example of, as a shaman, I learned to um, eat quinoa in my training. And when I researched the history of that, I found out that the people of Peru were living on, in the mountains on terraces that were about 12 feet wide. And they had the plant, the quinoa, which was such a wonderful thing. They could plant it on a 12 foot of space and they could feed a family of six with what came from it and they could turn it into flour and use it to bandage broken bones they could use it as war balls to uh, for long distance running and they had found many things they could do with it because it's a complete protein of the highest caliber so when the conquistadors came when the uh, when they came to peru and they found that they were revering it and thanking it they burned all the quinoa fields and they cut off all the hands of anyone who was eating or using it. And so the shamans of that time went higher into the mountains where the conquistadors could not breathe. And the people who were the normal people stopped and started planting corn and potatoes and then began to have birth defects and all the things that come along with the lesser nutritional value that came from that. This is an example of what happened all over the globe every time uh, those came in to colonize at any level. They brought with them their own understandings and their misunderstanding of what was taking place and stole the elevation of the relationship between the divine of nature and the people and left us nutritionally deprived, spiritually deprived, unable to protect ourselves. So essentially, we have the knowledge that all life deserves honor and respect. Mm -hmm. as well as gratitude because it was that gratitude that yes. allowed i could see with the peruvians that gratitude for the consciousness of the quinoa allowed them to explore the many facets of what the quinoa had yes. available for them so right the quinoa spoke to them and told them how to use it for medicine how to help their babies how to turn it into milk how to make it plaster for the broken bones because everything is conscious yeah but so. but the, the, let me just say though that in the fact that everything is conscious, in the same way that you look at a person when you're out, a male or a female, and you admire the way they're dressed or you like the way they look, that admiration is what opens the door to the communication. So in the admiration of the people being so grateful, the quinoa was not even eaten by birds because it would poison them. It meant that the people could eat it and the birds didn't take it. So in this admiration of it, the communication opened and blossomed, but we are in our world taught to not be in admiration of anything. That is, it is only the human. We are the mm -hmm. only thing in the universe. We are all that exists, and everything else. You know, we we have no concern about our ecology around us, about our trees, what happens in the forest, what happens between people. So that leaves us handicapped, mm -hmm. extremely handicapped. We have. We have no admiration for the tree that we are in contract with from birth that's in our backyard, so it doesn't talk to us because we don't admire it. If you want a woman to talk to you, do you admire it? Of course I do, <laughs> and I see she opens up. Yes. On multiple levels. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's so, the truth of it. Um, so this is interesting. Uh, I like to bring another perspective into play. So I'm thinking, Again, there, there are many people at various levels and degrees of this. Well, first off, let's kind of double back. So you said, we knew this, uh, the original people of the planet, and then somewhere along the lines, uh, this understanding has been forgotten or lost. Or purposely removed by Antelon. 
Yeah, that? That, that's another oh, plot twist. <laughs> plot twist. So let's let's go with that. Purposely removed by anti life because I, I think that's what happened. There is a trajectory where the natural processes of creation are extinguished. This is the goal and a plan to destroy the principle of the feminine. We see it in nature in the history of abuse to Mother Earth and artificial food and sterilized seeds and in vitro babies and robotic female companions and animals being produced without nature. Our reverence and our love for ourselves and nature is what is needed to keep us here. Call for the power of the feminine balance to come forward in our world with unwavering honor and respect to the masculine. Together, planetary balance can be restored. Speak to the consciousness of everything. I want to speak again to this this concept of like little insects and different things that seem insignificant and it's not just like insects but even our material possessions yeah. you know because the what you're saying is the shamans understood this through and through you know the people knew that everything is life you know so there was that reverence and respect across the grid but how does the everyday person carry that over with like a roach or something that we're like you on my territory, you shouldn't be here, therefore I got the authority to extinguish you, you know, because even your everyday people, but even highly vibrational people, we have this type of feeling or angst towards yes. something that seems threatening or different from us. It is so true that we are the students of our persecutors. So we are treated like an insect that can be squashed. We are murdered we are um, raped, our lands are pillaged, things are taken from us, the American yeah. Indians, the uh, Aborigines, all of the natural people on the planet. And the ones who do it, uh, we are emulating them through the mass consciousness. It is part, like anything that's small and defenseless, we mm -hmm. need to kill it. As if we don't have, we can't share a crumb with another aspect of life. We can't let them have our crumbs. In other countries, and I have been places where you go to a restaurant in the middle of the woods or the forest, and everyone in the restaurant will stop what they're eating and take a portion of their food out and put it near the front of the restaurant so that nature may have some of it. We're not taught these things. There's no reverence and respect for the fact that if you give, you get. Mm, yeah. You know, but this is, a, this is an understanding of the indigenous. This is an understanding of people. It's not well known in the Western world, but it is something that we we have become our um, persecutors. So we see when in the, in the South, when years ago and possibly now, when people would be walking in the field, their parents would tell them, their family would say, "If you see people on a truck, a gang of people on a truck, lay down so that they don't see you, because they will." do something to you for sport not because you've done anything mm -hmm. so we emulate that we see a roach walking across the floor and we jump up and we want to kill it right away we want to make sure it don't eat our crumbs <laughs> and you and your family where's your family at <laughs> we're your babies let's kill them too yes and, so, and it's true of ants and it's true of weeds and it's true yeah. of everything that we don't have communication with and don't have understanding with which could show us the way to survive. The roaches are impenetrable. They will be here, our, even our scientists says, after a, a nuclear war, the roaches would still be here. <laughs> Maybe we should be in contact with them. Last being standing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the ants know how to build. Mm -hmm. You know, why are we trying to kill them? Why are we pulling up the weeds and we can eat them? And our True food that. is genetically True modified, that. but the weeds are not. Yeah. You know, so, we are not thinking in terms of self-preservation, we're thinking in terms of who will continue to supply us with the, um, with the um, imitation off-brand designer bag. Who's gonna continue to give us our vegan purses, 
our plastic purses? Who's gonna to continue to do that? Instead of thinking, what the earth and then in the intelligence of the earth has given us everything and has provided a home for intelligences to uh, communicate with us, but we have no admiration, no reverence, no respect for them, so we don't know they can talk. So, question. I, I, from what you're sharing, I see this is partially an education issue. Like, we need to be properly educated to give respect and reverence where we're not uh, raised in a world where we're afraid of something that has more legs than we have. <laughs> and we're like, kill it! <laughs> but we can see the, the oneness, you know? It's, it's, I, so, but I also feel like it's it's even it's more than that. Like uh, based on what you were saying, like uh, it, there seems to be this type of leaning towards or resonance with things that are anti-life, things yes. that are not life. We've grown into this space of acceptance, as well as uh, like we want more of it. Yes. So it seems. So it's like. How how does a person navigate this? So, um, and I, I think it's more so of who are we speaking to? Like a person who's, like let's say they're in the space of, you know, they understand everything's consciousness from an intellectual standpoint, right? But like, how does one carry this over into their day to day experience? Like, how do we translate this, in, so that we can start teaching children this? Or, you know, it's it's so this is so systemic in the way of the world, not just the Western world anymore, because the world has become more of one place. It has become, people in Africa are, have on phones looking at social media, becoming mm -hmm. contaminated as yes, well. So this idea of catering to our own weaknesses only makes us weaker. So if we cater to the fact that we don't want to go outside, we don't want to do anything in nature, we're afraid of the cold, we're afraid of the bugs, we're afraid of, you know, something may get us all of these things are a response to what has already taken place so there has to be some context in that that you know the trees may release um things pollen that does give you an allergy because you're poisoning them with the telephone line it is possible that that is yeah. is a case but were you to have a piece of land and talk to your land then you could speak to the things that are there and your goodwill would be returned if you had, in fact, goodwill for it. So this idea of, um, mm -hmm. is, it's a big idea, but it needs to start somewhere. Like if those of us who are of the thinking, those of us who understand what can happen, we have taught, and you can see at the Of The Sun website, we have taught many people to speak to the consciousness of things that are alive. There are many posts that are communications from food or from, nature and from aspects where they clearly want to support us because they recognize all of these living things recognize that we're in this together except for us yes <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, question, question. Yeah. two things um first i'd like to acknowledge that question you asked to like really um resonated with me because i feel like you describe, to me, you describe where I'm at, where on an intellectual level, I am in agreement and in, 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 am in harmony with the pursuit of life and growth. However, like you said, the kind of the reality of, okay, where do I, how do I, what's my immediate steps in, in embracing and whether it be in speaking to the life that's within my surroundings, which me and uh, the children, just from being in proximity to, of the sun, we are growing and gaining and healing even without actively doing all of the processes. From the morphic and, resonance. Right, just, just from, from being in proximity. Resonance. So it out like it it really it really hit me when you asked that question that like wow I see our growth, I see our healing, I see the children's healing just from being in proximity, even without actively, let's say, enhancing the food or talking to the food ourselves. 
but we're still getting healing from the food due to the environment being all uh, enhancing in general, man, the food just being in this space or us just being in the space of that energy. So I want to acknowledge that. Um, but also question being, do you think of the sun can or would uh, maybe do a couple quick instructional clips or videos of like how what we can say to our food yes. in the spot on the moment or what we can say to the nature around us or just little little things that we can kind of always revert back to that would be fun you can show not just you know yourself you can show your children you can show others as well as little tips like little here's a tip on you know what you can say to raise the vibration of this today or something like that. do you think something like i think something like that would be very helpful and can be fun if you know um yeah it can be fun as well so was that something you all are, would be interested in doing or uh, open to do absolutely think, yeah. and in fact i've still. taught my grand my grandson uh often will speak to whatever is around me if there's a plant around me he will talk to the plant and ask it i have a basil plant one day he was talking to it and he was saying, how you doing? And the plant was saying, I really like being around your grandmother because I like the energy of the clearings. And then he said, well, aren't you sad she's going to eat you? And he said, no. The plant said, no, I'm going to taste so much better. And then he understood that the plant is in its purpose. The purpose of the plant was to be eaten, and it's in accord with its purpose. And so that taught him this understanding of to find the purpose of his life. And the purpose of, of the sun is to assist humanity with these understandings that all things existence is conscious the house you live in has a level of consciousness anything you make has if nothing else the consciousness from the maker so everything is conscious and should be considered so yes we would love to do that that's a it's something that happens automatically with the ones around us and those who are interested but if humanity would do this then life would be better and it would be more in the natural order where we weren't catering to the weaknesses it's interesting uh yes life would be better and we would put ourselves in harmony with the, the yes. natural flow and rhythm yes. of the planet because we are like the odd man woman out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. trying to get this free yeah. system to do or bend to our will it, it's true i'd like for you to share before we leave the story of your community you've had many communications with many things yes and you are a teacher of how to communicate with things i'd like you to share the story of how you have just talked to um, roaches or anything else that's been in the environment and what your thought was before you before we go from today yes so for the record i've spoke to many as lao mentioned a very a variety of different consciousness from interdimensional beings archangels etc but even physical uh, infestations things such as mold mice um, termites uh, bed bugs these type of things but uh, I think one of my most profound slash karmic <laughs> relationships <laughs> is with roaches or cockroaches. And uh, I have had experiences in my younger years that have, uh, I was traumatized, so to say, where my perception of a roach was that this is one of the worst things you can find in your house. And it's actually it speaks about who you are and the type of person you are and which it is but it isn't not within the realm of the third dimensional understanding because uh, I, I understand that who we are and how we respond to the thing shows us who we are yes you know that's the truth of it so uh, i have had some recent experiences with roaches and um, even within my growth and evolution this idea of mm, might have to extinguish these roaches. I might have to move them. And um, I went through a phase just to kind of keep the story brief or punctuated or abbreviated. I went through some experiences that profoundly changed me where I acknowledged or I, I literally, to paint the picture, I spoke to the consciousness of 
or a, a cockroach and it was on his back and it had knew that I was I was gunning for it and its family and I was about to extinguish it from the planet and um, living within the, the truth of our experiences what I find is you know I'm hit with this incongruency where it's like yo you're speaking this but are you being this through and through and uh, also the fact that I communicate and I think Lauta was nudging me speak to the roaches to bars talk to them so in speaking with it it was sharing with me my one, one, my limited perspective, how I was not showing them the appropriate respect and reverence and just acknowledging the reality. I even saw the understanding of what Lao Tzu was sharing about how the person who is abused will move forward and begin to abuse others who are in a lesser degree of power of them. And uh, humans do this. We do this by race and by classism and if you're probably at the bottom of any of them, you're carrying it over to other species. And I, I could see myself doing that. And I was, I was perpetuating the behavior of those who are operating within darkness, who are looking to dominate and control and operate outside of the natural order without the respect and just want to kill something on sight. So um, I was crying. <laughs> I was talking to the, the roach and it was like, oh my gosh, this is right. I was so wrong. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Like the, the information was coming in that strong and yeah. you know moving forward i i can say that i have had experiences speaking to them like they've been like crawling on me hanging out like hey what's up <laughs> if there was the equivalent to a hug that's what i experienced but uh, most poignantly with this idea is that i i began to move into the space of you know everything we can't compartmentalize this truth where it's just for humans no, the truth has to be through and through. And this process of evolution, where I see it for myself, but, but you know, human consciousness, it requires us to extend that understanding into these other realms so that we can be congruent through and through, and, but also receive many of the benefits that are available through that level of interaction, which I receive this level of unwavering respect for the consciousness of not just the roaches, but many other things. And I find that when you speak to them and ask them, hey, spider, you're webbing there. I'm gonna need you to move because I, I got, you know, this is not the best space to do this. They listen, they move, they will interact, they will engage with us, but we're not even presenting the, the opportunity right. for them to even to, to take our, okay, we'll, we'll hang out in this part of the house. Or... Which is exactly the way he, that we have been treated. Exactly. And our grandparents and their parents and their ancestors have all been treated like no consideration, mm -mm. no conversation, no options. Mm -hmm. When you talk about perspective, I find that very a very interesting word because that's edited observation. <laughs> yes. So we're all operating yes. with edited observation. The truth, once you understand this truth, it becomes very clear. We are property clearers. We deal with infestations. So we talk to the mice, we talk to the roaches, we talk to the ants, we talk to whatever the infestation is. And sometimes the, the ants will say, I'm living in the basement below the house. Why do you need to poison me? Can't I just stay here with my family? And then I go back to the owner of the house. I'm like, they're not gonna bother you. Can you not poison them? <laughs> and they begrudgingly said, well, as long as I don't see them. You know, so it's it's not any different than the 1960s and uh, racial separation. Um, <laughs> you know, like all the colored bugs over there. <laughs> it's I, no I, different. I'm over here thinking if I was a bug, I would hope that as I'm passing through the person's kitchen or bedroom, <laughs> traversing through space, that they would have enough respect to allow me to live and make it to where I had to go. <laughs> or at least tell me to leave. I kill you on sight <laughs> for daring to live in a space that they currently occupy, but they don't own. This is everything that's here. It is our earth the ants, the roaches, all of it, the spiders, this is their earth too. Yes. How dare we not allow for life to exist around us? So now we find ourselves with life escaping us. Our populations of women cannot produce children anymore. Eight million children have been born 
through in vitro since the first one. Eight million. That's a lot. That's that women cannot reproduce themselves with. How could we if we are anti-life? Yeah. How are we going to have life, be the, the gestator of life, and experience life when we haven't been through the uh, excruciating experience you had when you were crying and having that communication where you knew that they saw you? Yeah, it was unreal. And they saw you, not what you were projecting, they saw mm -mm. who you really were. Well, you look real incongruent. <laughs> it changed me. And so it can change all of us. We hope that this will benefit you. The people, many of you are healers, but you may have to face the bone crushing truth of mm. yourself yeah. before you could move into being a healer. And this is an experience we have already had and we encourage you to do so. And we will bring forth some videos that begin to teach you how to be in, in your birthright. You own this planet. What's on this planet are part of you. We are all part of one thing. We are part of the all that is, that existed before mechanized machines, before engines, before transhumanism, before all of those things existed. So we hope to see you again and further this discussion. Uh, one last thing before we go, uh, it's the end of the year. And for those who have been rolling with Other Sun for some time, we have our monthly group soul clearing that's coming up for December. And uh, this is an opportunity essentially to be clear for the new year. You know, if you want to start off right, uh, clearing and removing negative motivators, uh, past life interferences that are, you know, weighing us down from stepping into our divinity in ways in which we were speaking about today. Uh, definitely join up. You can find this on the Of The Sun website, uh, website on the homepage, www.ofthesun.com. It'll be in the description, and we look forward to seeing you there. We also have a level one property clearing that's coming up in 2022. This will be the remix. We are <laughs> revising this class. Uh, Lao Tzu Of The Sun is stepping back in to update it, and uh, I'd say as an instructor of this modality, and a seeker of truth and growth and evolution. It's so cool that um, the knowledge within of a sun, it's never stagnant. It's always constantly growing and evolving. Anyone who has been with us has uh, been able to see that if you step away for a minute and you come back, you'll see <laughs> we're doing new things, you know, or the understandings have grown and evolved. So it's the same thing with this quantum light property clearing level one class, which again, everything's consciousness, including the house. Uh, so February through March, you want to check the Ever Sun website for that as well. Um, you have any thoughts on this at all, Lalta? I'm really looking forward to um, updating and moving forward into 2022 to the level that we have actually grown to. So some of our classes and courses are being updated and ex expanded. We invite back all the original people who took the classes so that you can be updated and be in tune with the new levels of power that are available uh, for us to utilize to um, clean our spaces and places because the cleaning must never stop. Yes. In nature, we see that everything is constantly cleaning itself. This is not just physical hygiene, this is the unseen hygiene too. So uh, our earth needs to be cleaned. Property clearing is one way to do it. We invite you to join us. Thank you. All right. well. With Honor, Honor respect, respect, and, and gratitude, gratitude to all in Lakesh and, and Veritas.